Hey guys, welcome to another behind the scenes. In this video, we're gonna look at this week's animations being uh, the kind of the robot saga, the Sparkles Robot Friend part one and two. Um, and it's been quite a while since I've done a behind the scenes, or I've really done anything with this channel or even my second channel. And I'm gonna talk a little bit um, on that at the end of this video and also about the rigging series. Um, there is a little bit of some bad, some good news, I guess, depending on, I guess that it would be subjective. But either way, there's some info about that at the end if you are involved with the rigging series or anything like that at all. On the actual animation, um, the idea for this came from, well obviously this is from the Trapped in Space, uh, pl pl I forgot the name, Plen Plenimo, or I think that's the name of the adventure map, um, and I was going through it and I, I, I found like these potential animations, like there were, I found a couple different possible animations but none of them were really full enough on their own and after just kind of trying to think of how I can make something of this, I thought of I thought of the actual part, the second part, the animation that comes after this. I kind of had that idea in mind that I wanted to do something like you know dramatic like that. But I knew in a typical one animation format, it just wouldn't be impactful enough. There isn't enough time to you know build a bond and then have a dramatic ending to it in a minute or so. Um, so the idea for this animation, um, basically the only purpose for this animation was to build that like relationship with him and the robot. So this animation just came so that way the second part would be more impactful, I guess is the word. Um, so yeah, this was kind of just um, an afterthought type of thing. Just introduce the robot and have some bonding time. I th actually, the, the final exported video of this is called Bonding Time. Um, so yeah, he meets him, um, you know, he boots him up and they have that little, you know, their little montage thing. Um, they boots him up. Yeah, and then there's the little montage where he's playing with them. These blocks actually, I initially um, animate, or these were actually simulated, you know, with rigid bodies. Um, and then when I actually went to bake the simulation, uh, which basically turns in the math, the math calculations that's, you know, calculating how they should bounce and tumble and stuff, turns that into keyframes, which is much easier to play back. Um, it actually crashed. My crashed. I'm like, oh great. And second time around, I just said screw it and animated them by hand, which actually ended up taking less time. And I think it looks believable. Um, I actually pretty much copy the results of the like the way this block just slides out to. That's what how it looked in the actual first, the the actual simulated version. So I was like, eh, I'll just I'll just copy that there. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of an annoying thing <laughs> um but yeah anyway moving on so yeah they have their little bonding time and then the way this actually ended originally because as i mentioned this was just kind of a build up to the second one so i'm like okay this just needs to end um in a way that'll lead into the second one so the first the original idea i had was that instead of this villager interaction it basically they go up to the, the to the teleporter teleport up to the ship and that would be the end of it and i kind of ran that by sparkles because i've never really all the animations I've done have always had their own, like, have always been, like, their own standalone, like, uh, have their own ending, I guess, if that makes any sense. Like, they never really end on, like, a cliffhanger or any type of ending that would suggest there's a part two. Like, with Crash Landing, obviously, I've done a bunch of those animations, and they're, they're kind of continuations of each other. But you could watch any one of those, and, you know, as, as long as you know what's going on in Crash Landing, it would make sense. It has a, you know... Its own ending and its own, or its own start and its own ending. Um, it's not based on anything before or after that. So, in this case, that would be a little bit different with them teleporting and kind of just being like a cliff, cliffhanger type of situation. And he's like, if you if you could think of something with a bit more of a punchline, that'd be good. Uh, so I came up with this, um, you know, this little interaction with the villager where he takes the block, which is actually way better than just having them teleport away. That would be so boring. But. Yeah, anyway, that's it for this one. Like I mentioned, this is kind of just like an afterthought, a build-up. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into the second one, which I actually have minimized right here. All right, so here we are in part two, or kind of the main main event, if you will. Um, and the first thing I do with any animation is I, is I cut together the audio. And in this case, it ended up being a minute and 40 seconds when I was done, which is obviously way longer than a typical animation. And I really don't want to have to cut any, make it any shorter, because... You know, it needed that time to have as much impact as possible. Uh, there's kind of like three results that can happen if you're trying to make the audience, the viewer, feel a certain or have a certain reaction. You can either, um, they can either end up not knowing what you're trying to do, not feel that way, you know, have no response. 
they can see what you're trying to do, but not really feel that like you almost were there. You know, you know, we, we see what you're trying to do, but you didn't really do it too well. And then there's they react or they respond in the way you intended. So I really don't want to fall in that first category. Um, so I wanted to leave in as much as possible. But the challenge was obviously it's going to take way longer than a typical one minute animation. Um, animating actually didn't take that long because well, that much longer because a lot of it's slow motion. There isn't much lip syncing. Um, so that didn't take as long, but rendering, which there's nothing you can do about it, if you have to render double the amount of frames, it's going to take twice as much time. That was the that was the kind of the the um, you know the hard part because I had to get it rendering as soon as possible, so it'd finish in time, which ended up being a little bit late, but I think it was worth it. And based on reading the comments, I think uh, I think it did, it did pretty well. And I I really like reading the comments on these type of videos because one they're fun to read you know they're like the more dramatic videos uh the jerry slime one and stuff like that they are they're more fun to read and like 95 percent of them are on topic like if you go to a typical video you know just some random video half of them will be like advertisements or first or i'm here early let me make a joke those type of comments but with this kind of video you can go through and look at it now like so many most of them the vast majority are relating to the video which is really cool to see um, but yeah, so as far as the actual video goes, they teleport in, and this was kind of a cheesy the orb thing. I couldn't really think of how they should come in. I'm like, I need, I was trying to kind of move quickly at least, get a, get a, hit the ground running. So I kind of just made this glowing orb, have them teleport in, and then that's how they get introduced. Crap, I just moved the camera. Oops. Um, and then they walk off. And actually, um, this, there's, you know, let me pull up a frame here. Um, render. I don't know how long. Oops, that's the wrong camera angle. Whoops. Um, so obviously all this terrain is exported out of the map. Um, and in the actual map, there's glowstone behind this wall. And you can see with the with the material I'm using, um, everything that glows in the game, these lamps or lanterns, whatever they're called, the glowstone is all glowing. And the glowstone behind the wall is glowing too, and it's creating this cool accent lighting, which I didn't intend. I didn't realize there was glowstone behind the wall. So I wasn't expecting that. So when I was doing my first test renders and I see this like cool glowing accent light, I'm like, hey, I didn't even have to do anything for that. Pretty cool. And I actually ended up adding that into another scene that didn't have it later on, which I'll point out. Um, just because I really liked the way it looked and it really didn't cost me any work or time or anything. So that was cool. Um, so yeah, they, they walk in. We gotta get rid of this. You know, they look around. Villager alerts them, they come in. And uh, yeah, then it gets to the music. And the music actually f was, this was the music I was listening to when I was kind of thinking up the animation, kind of visualizing it. And I didn't think I'd use that in the final video because it's it's not really background music. It has lyrics and it's more, more punchy, I guess. Um, so I didn't expect to use that. But after looking around, I was like, you know what, this is, this is the, probably the best soundtrack to use. Um, for this, and it's royalty free, obviously, which is good, so I could actually use it. Um, so yeah, I ended up going with it. I was a little worried, you know, how people, because it's not like, I don't know, it's not the a genre that I feel like a lot of people, you know, most people watching these kind of videos are more probably into like electric music, that or, you know, like that kind of music. So this was a little bit different. I wasn't sure how people would feel, but I think I think it actually ended up being the a good choice. Uh, and then there's yeah, the the slow motion running montage deal uh which actually that first opening shot let me get to it here i really like the way this looks i never like animated the camera in this way before so it's like kind of moving in three different ways so it's actually sliding backwards uh with them running obviously but it's it's moving slower than they are so he's actually slowly catching up to the camera so in order to keep him centered the camera has to rotate uh inward a little bit and then it's also I'm, i also animated the focal length to um to open up as he's running closer so i don't know it just creates this really cool look uh that it looks better in the rendered if you go back and watch it but i don't know i just really liked that opening shot and then the explosion in the background and the way that like illuminates the back wall and everything i don't know i just really like the way it looks um and then i kind of did that with this shot and this shot but not as extreme um so yeah they have their you know they're running things are exploding in the background uh, you know, he's running up to the lift. And then this shot here was kind of to to show him falling behind to kind of convey that he's, you know, falling behind. So you have the camera is getting further away from him. Um, and then you have them get blown up. And he runs up on the, the lift. 
and before he can react, the villager already pressed the button. And I, <laughs> this kind of sounds messed up, but I need to make sure he was messed up enough, like with the broken arm and the leg and everything, that it, it, it that he couldn't just get up and run after them because, obviously, like I didn't want that to be in the video, and I didn't want people to think, well, why didn't he just get up and catch up with them? So I had to make sure he was uh, sufficiently jacked up from the explosion, which sounds kind of messed up. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he, yeah, well, you guys know how it goes from here. And then the little wave at the end. And specifically cut so that way he's right in the center when the the crack closes in. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this, uh, for, uh, for this animation. I hope you guys enjoyed. Oh, I would mention I was going to talk about rigging series stuff. So, basically, I don't want to get into specifics, but I've just been busy with stuff. I, that's not such a crappy, crappy way to explain it, but... Take my, just for the sake of saving time, I've been busy, quote unquote, busy with stuff. Um, so I, the rigging series is actually something that's really time consuming, uh, more than you might think, because I have to think, obviously, what I'm going to do in the video, and then I have to research everything, make sure I know the tools, uh, you know, really well, before I actually try and teach you guys, tell you guys how to use them, make sure I know alternatives, you know, all the little, what every little option and button does, and do all that research, basically do the actual video first to make sure, you know, it'll go smoothly, and then actually record it and then edit it. And it's actually really time consuming. And doing the two animations for Sparkles a week, and now I'm going to start doing um, animations for Minecraft Minute Parodies, if you heard about that or have heard of them. I just don't have a ton of time. And the reading series, for what I, it's just, it's really time consuming. And for the second channel, I still want to make videos for that, but I want to do videos that are just their own, their standalone videos, not series, not long series, because those are a lot more con uh, time consuming. Like, for example, if I wanted to do a video on how to render ambient occlusion, well, first off, there's like a billion, bajillion different ways, but um, if I was doing it a specific way, say I wanted to use mental ray to render ambient occlusion, that would be appealing to most people. I could do that off the top of my head. I don't have to research anything. I could do that, record it, go through an example, and it would be like a seven minute video. And I think I want to start doing videos like that instead because those don't won't take nearly as much time and those I can do much really regularly. I can do those on, you know, a, a bi-daily basis every other day. And, you know, people can request if they want me to show them a specific thing. So I want to start doing that. Probably going to discontinue the rigging series, uh, maybe private those videos until I have time to actually invest into that more. But um, I guess now onto the good news, I guess. Uh, I want you guys to have a rig you can use uh, to do if I'm, you know, if I'm showing a certain, you know, something that involves animating a character. Uh, and you guys need a rig that you can use with me. And my rig I released a while ago, my version 3 rig, is pretty crappy, I'm going to be honest. It was my third attempt, but it was a really early attempt. I mean, the first rig I made was garbage, which only lasted me a month. The second rig I made maybe lasted me two months. The third maybe lasted me six months and then this fourth version i've made has lasted me since then the past year and a half ish well maybe not quite that long but it's lasted me a long time and it's actually actually a good rig um so i'm gonna release that make a public version of that release it that way people can have an actual solid rig to use it's not the most um in-depth rig but it's really easy to use it's what i use for all my animations because it's so quick to animate with and it's easy to use so i think that'll be the perfect rig um for beginners and stuff. So I'm going to release that. I'm going to make a video on how to use it and everything with the download link later. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know what was going on with that. So that's kind of the way things are going. I don't know if you're, if, if, if you take that as good news or bad news or whatever, but yeah, that's what's going on. Um, but yeah, that's it for this. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching.